if they have an opportunity to host Texas in the next two years before they leave, it will be an absolute madhouse of a game. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master of Football back at it again. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be up to date on all things EA College Football and watch plenty of college football content, subscribe to this channel right now. I'll also do plenty of pro at Madden content as well. Basically, anything related to football, hit the red subscribe button. If you do it, it's free. It's not going to cost you anything at all. All it's going to cost you is being up to date on everything EA College Football, college football, pro football, Madden, anything like that. You'll love it. Click that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys, I came across an article recently, and it was a really, really good article about the Big 12 basketball media days. Big 12 basketball, obviously, you know that Kansas won the national championship last year. The year before, it was Baylor. They are coming off two consecutive national championships, so they are definitely one of the more elite uh, college basketball conferences out there. Now, I do think there was a lot of information that was said in here by Brett Yormark, the commissioner of the Big 12, that I think relates over to the football world. We're going to get into that because I think it's going to bring up three interesting scenarios. One, it's going to talk about some of the scheduling that's going to happen out there. Two, it's going to talk about their strategy because he had already said basically the fact that they are not done expanding. And then the third thing, I think what he says also reigns true, or not necessarily reigns true, but heavily impacts the ACC in its current situation. Let's get into that article right now. So here are with SI.com. We are an all Sooners fan nation. And it says Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark comments on League Without Oklahoma in Texas. Now, again, this is a Sooners website, a Sooners section. So they're kind of like, hey, how's this going to go? How's this going to go? I'll let you know that if you're expecting them to leave before 2025, you're going to be upset. But we'll go ahead and continue on with this article here. New Big 12 Conference Commissioner Brett Yormark minced no words when describing what he thinks the league will look like without flagships Oklahoma and Texas. In regards to negotiation, new television contract without the Sooners and Longhorns among the inventory, Yormark shows only promise. That's a little bit of copium, but we'll get into that in a second here. I know the media has stated that with the loss of Texas and Oklahoma, our number would go backwards. Let me say it very clearly. We're not going backwards and we're not staying flat. We're going up. The only question is, how far up? I do think uh, you can't lose two of the biggest brands. First of all, that makes no sense on SEC's part because within the SEC is like, no, we're going to add them, but they're not going to add anything to this league. No, no, no. You're going to lose money. However, the thing about it is with this deal, because of inflation and this and that, and because of the interest of college football growing, I do think that, you know, you're not going to notice that in terms of the stat sheet. It's probably going to be going up. But if Texas and Oklahoma were there, the number would definitely go up from there. So, Brett, a little bit of copium there. But uh, we'll, we'll move past that. I'll give you a break. First year, you know, anyways, let's, can, let's continue on here. Yormark said Tuesday at Big 12 Basketball Media Days in Kansas City that his gut feeling was that the league would begin negotiations with the current partners ESPN and Fox before the February 2024, 2024 formal negotiation win, or negotiating window opens. And those negotiations will depict a Big 12 without OU in Texas, but not before 2025. They committed themselves in advance of me getting here. They've reiterated that commitment, so they'll be here through the duration of the current grant of rights agreement, and my relationship with both Texas and Oklahoma is very, very strong. Your remark also confirmed what was reported by ESPN and CBS last week, that in 2023 and 2024, a football and basketball scheduling model has been set and revealed that next year's football schedule will be announced in late November or early December. That's, I'm telling you, that's going to be really interesting here. Because it also mentions this here that with BYU, Central Florida, Cincinnati, and Houston joining the Big 12 next year, the league will have 14 members but will not have divisions, Yormark said. And over a two-year period, each of the schools will play each other at least once, he said. So excited for what the schedule will look like. We will finally put it out. Rivalries will be preserved, absolutely, looking at geography, obviously from a student-athlete perspective and travel. So all those principles are part of the decision-making, but we're in a great place. He also said that he wants to nationalize the conference. I want a future student athletes to come to the conference for all the right reasons. I want us to show up in places we haven't been before. Very interesting there. But he also said he wants to lay out an international strategy over the next six months. And basketball, he said, is a big part of that. Talks about his background and things like that. But I'm telling you right now, he says he's really bullish on this conference. But man, he's, he's definitely coming out hot. So he mentioned a couple things in there. Again, he talked about the scheduling, the fact that every single team, again, there's going to be 14 teams for that temporary period, 2023, 2024, and then 2025, Texas and Oklahoma will be leaving. A lot of people thought, well, 
you know, Oklahoma, Texas, they're going to find a way out of the grant of rights. They're going to find a way. They're going to find a way. Um, I'm, I'm, the more this goes along, the longer we continue on here, the more that looks like that's not going to be the case here. So it looks like Texas and Oklahoma are more than likely stuck in the conference. Now, one thing that's really interesting about that, if you think about that, remember all the, the current Big Ten, excuse me, the current Big 12, uh, those 10 teams plus the four, 14 teams. There's one matchup that I think is just about set up, just just about confirmed here. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a really, really saucy one because it's it's a saga that, although it hasn't necessarily happened on the field, has been going off the field for a long time. And that would be the University of Texas and the University of Houston pseudo rivalry. So your boy Tillman Fertitta, he is a big time uh, donor and a regent with uh, the University of Houston. And it says Tillman Fertitta, again, April 6, 2017. Uh, UT land deal in Houston, again, Houston's uh, stomping grounds, obviously, is arrogance. So we see here Tillman Fertitta, the CEO of Landry's and University of Houston Board of Regents chairman. And he says, uh, Tillman Fertitta, a billionaire who serves as the chairman of the University of Houston Board of Regents, called the University of Texas's systems purchase of hundreds of acres in Houston, a case of having too much money. You see what happens to arrogance sometimes you lose, he said before t the Texas Senate's nominations committee on Thursday morning began. And he said that he called the UT's decision to purchase the property for more than $200 million the elephant in the room. So remember what Brett said. Brett said that everybody's going to play each other at least once. That doesn't just designate whether or not it's going to be, you know, UT is going to visit UCF or Cincinnati is going to visit Oklahoma or Oklahoma is going to visit BYU or BYU is going to visit Texas. That's not all been decided. However, if I had to put money on this, with the added sting of the fact they're leaving the conference, they're kind of like, all right, you're going to leave the conference? That's fine. Uh, we're going to make you go visit one place in particular. How about the University of Texas has to go visit Houston in Houston. I think that would be an absolutely massive game. First of all, I bet there's plenty of Longhorns in Houston, obviously. That's just a, a complete guess on my part, but I bet there is. But, man, I think that that's one game that I guarantee you, Brett Yormark and Tillman Fertitta are going to kind of look at each other and be like, yeah, they're going to send them there. So that's going to be a really interesting game to watch, look out for. I am betting that it's going to happen. I might be wrong. Only two chances, two years, so you never really know. But, man, imagine Houston after all the little the battles they've had with uh, you know Texas. The fact that it sounds like, you know, again, these are just rumors out there that, that Texas did not want Houston to join the Big 12 previously. And then they were kind of forced into in this instance because they were leaving. So they didn't really have a say. So... I think that Houston's had kind of like a, a little bit of animosity towards Texas, and they'll have an opportunity to take it out on them, hopefully. I mean, Texas is a growing brand. You never know what they're going to be, but whatever it is, I know that, you know, he University of Houston, if they have an opportunity to host Texas in the next two years before they leave, it will be an absolute madhouse of a game. The next thing you want to talk about is you want to nationalize the conference. So I think that especially with USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. As long as certain parameters are fixed, I mean, LAX is a huge airport. It flies direct to almost everywhere in the Big Ten. It's going to be really easy on them for, you know, the logistics for it. So, but I do think what's going to happen here is that, you know, program, you know, prestige size is going to be the biggest determining factor of whether or not teams can go over to different conferences. So the SEC is going to get bigger conference, to, you know, bigger entities to come in. And then, you know, the Big 12 is going to get medium entities to get in. The, the American, you know, the Conference USA is going to get smaller entities. I think it's going to how it's going to kindly work out. It's going to kind of sort itself into who cares, what's the media market, what's the donors like, what's this, what's that, what's the alumni, what's the fan base, what's the, you know, what's the actual engagement of the media market because there's plenty of media markets out there like Rice uh, that they don't really command much of the local media market. But I think that what will happen here is the Big 12 is going to be probably definitely a, a, a second tier um, they're still going to be top five and they're still going to have championship level football. Obviously you see it right now. The fact that Kansas state and TCU and Oklahoma state are all still pretty good. I mean, Kansas is having a good football season. The big 12 has a little bit of a resurgence here, but I do think that they're going to be a, kind of like that second tier. So not necessarily the top where it's going to be, you know, New York, LA is going to be dominated by the big 10. The South is going to be mostly dominated by the sec, but then the biggest brands outside of that, I think the pac 10 has a chance However, the Pac-10 only lasts as long as the Big Ten's desire to stay at 16. But if, unless that changes, then I think that what the Big 12 is going to be is almost like get eventually to like a 20-team national you know, conference where it's got, you've got, you know, 
yeah, six or seven over here, six or seven over here, a couple over here, and you all kind of play each other. You play mostly in your group. Sometimes you'll travel outside of your group. It'll be something to that extent. So they also, in addition to want to be nationalized, they also want to get a little cooler too. This was back from July 13th of 2022 from your boy Max Olsen over at The Athletic. He says, Brett Yormark says he wants to position the Big 12 brand to be a little more national, a little younger, a little hipper, and cooler. So a little more national. He mentioned he wants to go out west, wants to get into that fourth window. Um, he's already got some teams out east. I know there's a couple of things that there he needs to address. They already mentioned the previous regime when it was Bob Bullsby addressed the fact that they were interested in adding USF if they had to do it again because USF's close to UCF. UCF wouldn't be out there on an island with themselves. It would be a good program to kind of add. But with that, he also said he wants to add them a little younger, hipper, and cooler. Well, I already know one place they can go and add younger, hipper, and cooler. You got to add the blue turf, dude. Okay, you just got to add the blue turf. Okay, I know I'm a complete homer for Boise State. It is what it is. You got to add the blue turf. It's so cool. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I know, and I have already said this before, so everybody don't get in the comments. Boise State's never going to get added. I already know here's what's going to happen. Whatever happens with the Big 12, Pac-12, I don't think Boise State's in the first set of moves. I think they're in the second set of moves. But, man, I think that you want to get cooler. There's nothing cooler than the blue turf, okay? I don't care what you're saying. And last but not least, I wanted to talk about how, these, how this impacts the ACC. Because, and again, my friend Tony Altamore on an interview, he basically said, if you think about Texas, Texas is one of the biggest and most powerful universities in the country. It is one of the top 100 universities in the world. It is an absolutely incredible incredibly powerful influential i mean there's so much money with texas oh my god so much power this and that and they can't get out of their grant of rights with all that power and everything like that it still doesn't come up to snuff so with that the acc right now is currently stuck in their deal until 2036 i do think we'll probably see some moves before that because you, you do see moves several years before this goes into effect in the same way that you know texas and oklahoma 2025 was announced last year gives you a couple years of, of leeway with that so we'll probably hear something about the acc probably closer to the 2031 2032 something like that but it might be until then until we hear something man because I, I just don't see how people can get them out of this deal seeing the fact that oklahoma and texas in a shorter deal with less time on it still can't get out of their grant of rights and again the big determining factor here a lot of people mention all you got to do is get eight votes all you got to do is get eight votes and again if you got those 15 votes remember we including notre dame who is a partial member if you got eight votes you can do it i'm having trouble counting that up for a guarantee found this over here on 247 Sports, and this is just a, a person asking the questions here. If it takes eight teams to break the ACC grant of rights, who is the eighth team to vote? Yes. Yes, votes. Florida State, I agree. Clemson, I agree. UNC, I agree. UVA, I agree. Virginia Tech, NC State, Georgia Tech, I even see Miami down here as well. You want to add Miami on that list? Uh, those are all definitive no's. Um, because, again, if you're leaving this, you're, you're, you're telling me that Georgia Tech, NC State, and Virginia Tech are going to absolutely roll the dice that the Big Ten and or the SEC want them in their conference. Uh, there's no guarantee that's going to happen. And, again, we're seeing what's happening right now with Oregon. We're seeing what's happening with Washington. Uh, they're basically, like, outright begging the conference to add them in, and they're still not going to do it. More than likely, what's going to happen with the Big Ten is they're going to wait at least five to seven years, then see if they want to add a West Wing out there with you know, uh, Washington and Oregon and Stanford and Cal. If that's not going to happen, then they're probably going to stay at 16. The SEC is probably going to stay at 16 too. And if these teams honestly become available, I think that these four have a chance, but I don't see UVA, I, or excuse me, Virginia Tech, I don't see NC State, I don't see Georgia Tech doing that. I don't see Pitt doing it. I don't see Notre Dame. You might be able to add in there, but I still just don't see the votes counting up there. A lot of people say, oh, I see him, I see him, I see him. No, you don't. You're completely guessing. Okay, I'm completely guessing too, but my guess has logic with it. But I just, I'm telling you right now, because of the fact that Texas and Oklahoma can't get out of their grant of rights, I don't see some weird cabal of people get together and vote on that. It requires too much coordination, too much this, too much that, and there's too much of a chance for these bottom teams getting left out and having to go back to, gosh, I mean, go to the American, maybe join the Big 12. I mean, they, they wouldn't mind that, but I just don't see them rolling the dice like that. That's just me. Other than really, really hopeful ACC fans that think that they're definitely going to get out of the grant of rights, get in the comments right now and let me know what you think is going to happen. What's going on with Brett Yormark, man? I'm telling you, how do you think he wants to get, league, get the league to be cooler? Do you think that means streaming? What do you think he wants to do there? International, those games, I'm telling you, does he want to do international football games? The only international game I can think of right now is the Bahamas Bowl. 
Uh, and then, again, what do you think he's going to do with that schedule? Because I'm talking UCF, Houston, BYU in Texas. That was an interesting game there. That was the game that got Manny Diaz fired as the defensive coordinator from the University of Texas. So there's a lot of interesting matchups there. I think Cincinnati's kind of in their own, you know, entity. nobody really has a lot of animosity towards Cincinnati. Uh, maybe West Virginia. I don't know. But uh, get in the comments right now. Let me know what you think of this whole situation. And remember, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys later. I am out.